been my great delight to te with, teach with the teaching team uh, that you'll meet today for, we think, seven years or eight years. Uh, Professor Lero, do you want to pick it up? I will. I'm Joe Lero, and I'm speaking to you also from Texas, but from the capital of Texas, the city of Austin. And and uh, can, can it really be true that that we have been teaching for 35 years? <laughs> <laughs> it oh it my may goodness. be. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, how how young we must have been. Anyway, I I'm uh, uh, I, I uh, I'm nominally retired, but I continue to teach, uh, and I teach now at uh, at Austin Community College, which is a a, a school here, a two-year college here in Austin, Texas, and I have also taught. Um, uh, most recently with uh, for, for, with Professor Marston and Professor Smith at Drake University. And I've been teaching American and Americans today who are doing this program for, I don't know, it seems like four or five years now, something like that. Cuckmolody Willie. Cuckmolody Professor Marston, you better take the mic away from us before we say anything. Well, I, I would, but first I have to know what it is that you were laughing about because uh, one of the things that you need to know about me, uh, if you don't know me before, is that I do not speak Russian. I, uh, I'm here uh, because I have a good deal of experience teaching language and culture, just not your language. Um, I have taught um, English, French, and Spanish, and uh, although I don't usually admit it, uh, Latin. Um, <laughs> so that's because I've learned Latin twice. And, and that implies that I forgot what I knew once and then quickly forgetting what I knew again. I am not located in the, in the Republic of Texas, as the great state of Texas is sometimes called. I am in the great Midwest on the Great Plains <laughs> in Des Moines, Iowa, um, the center of the universe. And I am a retired professor from Drake University, uh, which is located here in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, it's in the middle of the country. And um, I love uh, participating with this teaching team. And I look forward to it. And I also look forward to getting to know you. Um, I will tell you that one of the wonderful things about teaching in this format, about learning in this format, is that whereas in a regular classroom, quite often you are uh, you're listening to the teacher. If you're lucky, you're also speaking to the teacher and your fellow students. But what we can offer you here requires you to be more active than that. We want you as participants to speak, uh, speak up, because if you don't make mistakes, you learn a whole lot slower. And also, to pay attention to the chat function, um, where I uh, will be writing and where I hope that you will write as well. And um, if you will now, please, everyone, Find the chat and uh, say hello. It will show your name. And then um, as you leave the course today, you will be able to save the chat transcript, which um, is a complement in writing to the audio and video that you will hear. So welcome to America and Americans today. I can hardly wait to get to know you. And while you are typing in the chat, we are going to begin asking you to introduce yourselves. Uh, but we do this in a slightly different way than you may have done in classes before. We are going to pair you up and ask you to introduce each other. 
Now we realize that you may not know each other, um, so let me take a first pair here. I see um, Constantine, your mic is on. Why, we're going to pair you um, with, uh, who shall we pair you with? Uh, uh, do we have a volunteer who would like to work with, uh, with uh, Constantine? Sorry, not so fast. <clears throat> ah, okay. A and uh, Marina, is your mic on? Marina, are you with us? Uh, 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 Ma Ma Marina is our guest teacher. Ah, okay, then we will we will pick. Uh, how about Olga uh, Vasima? Are you there? I'm here. Hello. Okay. Olga, what I'd like you to do is ask Constantine some questions about himself. You may do that in Russian, but then you're going to turn around and tell us about Constantine in English. Uh, uh, I, I want to ask, I'm oh, sorry, I need to ask uh, Constantine about himself. And you may do in that in Russian. And then you will introduce him to the group in English. But then you will turn around and introduce him to us in English. Uh, I ask in English and uh, translate to English. Oh, in Russia. Ask. Ask, ask in Russian and then translate to English. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Konstantin. <laughs> and Olga, we want we want to know where he lives, what he does. Does he have children? What are his hobbies? Uh, what is his profession? No, 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 that kind of thing, huh? Oh, uh, okay. Does he have a cat or a dog? That's very, <laughs> very important. <laughs> Go ahead, Dai. Konstantin? Aha, uh -huh. uh, сколько тебе лет? А я должен по-русски отвечать или по-английски? Ну да, ты мне говоришь uh, по-русски, а я перевожу. Uh -huh. А, вот, 52. Uh -huh. 52. Ты женат? Да. А, у тебя есть дети? Да. Сколько? У меня двое детей. Э, так. А, мальчики, девочки? Можно сказать, что мальчики. Что значит можно сказать? Есть сомнения? Раньше были мальчики. А, понятно. А сколько им лет? 20, 26 и 25. Угу. Хорошо. А твоя профессия? Машинист метро. О, боже мой. Инжайн драйвер. Отлично. Как ты сказал, это звучит? Инжайн драйвер. Драйвер. Uh, так, твои хобби? Немецкий язык. Все? Все, да. А из какого ты города? Я из Москвы. И родился в Москве? И родился в Москве, и живу в Москве. Хорошо. Ты сейчас учишься? Да, вместе с тобой. Спасибо. Так, хорошо. А что там еще надо было спросить? Я не помню. Да, я что-то тоже. Твоя профессия. Ну, так, хватит. Давай, рассказывай, угу. мы все, все не успеем. Так, все. Okay. I'm ready. Tell us about him in English. Константин uh, is uh, 52 uh, years, years old. He is married and uh, he has uh, two, uh, uh, two sons. Uh, uh, 26 years old and 25 years old. He is a uh, under driver, uh, I think. And uh, his hobby is uh, uh, German. Uh, he lives and uh, <coughs> he he was born and uh, lived in Moscow. Uh, and now he is studying in uh, uh, university uh, with me. Uh, that's all. <laughs> ah, very nice. Good. Now we're going to flip and uh, 
Konstantin will ask questions of, to Olga and in Russian, and then he will report to the group in English. So, Konstantin. Olga. Mm -hmm. I don't see you. Не удобно спрашивать, насколько тебе лет? 23. Записать бы. Ладно. Ты из Москвы? А, нет, я из Сергея Посада. Ты родилась в Сергеев Посаде. Да. Так, дальше чего? Детей у тебя нет? Нет. Замужем? Нет. Это хорошо. Так. Что там еще дальше-то? Где ты работаешь? Я нигде не работаю. Я домохозяйка. А где ты училась раньше? А, первое образование да, да. Этот, МГУ. Ага. Московский государственный. И я эколог по образованию. Ага. А хобби у тебя есть? Да, я люблю вязать, смотреть а фильмы. Да, ты не знаешь? А, сейчас я тебе отправлю. И я люблю кататься на лыжах. Так. Достаточно. Ну, ну да, я думаю. Хорошо. Давай, Константин, Ольга Васина was born in Sergiev Passat. It is a small town in the Moscow region. Uh, not so small at present. It uh, was a small town some years ago. Uh, and uh, she is uh, 23. Mm, she is not married and uh, she is not married yet. And so she uh, has no children. And uh, then mm, she was in Moscow University named after Romanosov and uh, she is ecologist. Mm, very interesting. What else? Her hobby, she has some hobbies. Uh, for example, she likes films. She likes skis, and uh, she likes, I don't know the word. Knitting. Как? Knitting. Knitting. Mm -hmm. Knitting. Oh, knitting. 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 Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I, that's all that I have recognized. Ah, very good. Uh, excellent introduction. Thank you. Thank you to your both. Um, now let's take the other Olga and uh, Slava. Um, who would like to start? To, he will do the same thing. Slava, why don't you, inter why don't you ask some questions to Olga, the, the second Olga, and then you can introduce her to us. Uh, yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I uh, can uh, questions Olga. Yes. Right. So, um, Olga, uh, can you hear us? Sushinskaya, um, huh? Yes. Uh, Olga, you you travel in uh, America. You, you can you can ask her in Russian if you'd like. Um, <laughs> uh, Slava. Uh, Slava, you can ask her in Russian if you'd like. Slava, you can ask her in Russian if you'd like. Slava, you can ask her in Russian if you'd like. Slava, you can ask her in Russian if you'd like. Ah, here she goes. Слышно? Да, слышно. Слава, ты услышал ответ на вопрос? Нет, к сожалению, Оля. Я не была за границей ни разу. 
понятно. Э, сколько тебе лет? Мне 29. Э, где работаешь? Какого образования? А, ну, работаю я сейчас э, менеджером по логистике в компании, которая занимается импортом фруктов. А, а по образованию я инженер железнодорожного транспорта. Как семья, жена или есть ли дети? Да, я замужем, у меня двое детей. Они двойняшки, пятилетние. От мальчика, девочка. Ну, все, наверное, да? Да. Это был Ольга. Ольга not uh, tra traveling in uh, America and other country. Uh, Ольга have uh, family and uh, have uh, two children. Uh, it's uh, boy and girl. Uh, boy is uh, five years. Uh, yes. yes, five years old. Yes. Five years old, uh, and uh, Olga, uh, 29 years old, uh, and uh, his work is uh, manager uh, on uh, logistics in a uh, big company. <laughs> logistics. Logistics. Logistics, yes. Ah, very nice. Very, very good. Now let's flip. And Olga, it's your turn to uh, ask some questions to Slava and then tell us about him. Yes, okay. Slava. Mm -hmm. uh, сколько тебе лет? Мне 20 лет. Uh, ты сейчас учишься? Uh, да, учусь в, юридическом, в юридической академии. Uh, это в Москве или в Омске? Это Омск. Ты, наверное, не женат в силу возраста. Нет, я не женат. Какие у тебя увлечения? Какое хобби? Увлечения – музыка, игра на музыкальных инструментах, гитара, гармошка, губная, гармоника и пианино. Может быть, у тебя есть домашние животные? А, да, есть кот. Кот. Чтобы еще спросить, какие книги тебе нравятся? Книги мне нравятся про биографию, биографические книги и исторические. Последняя книга, которую прочитал, можно сказать, что это был Стив Джобс про его книга. Стив Джобс, ага. Понятно. Окей. Слава из 20 years old. Uh, he's from Mos uh, from Omsk. Uh, uh, he Uh, he likes uh, music. He plays git, uh, git, git, um, guitar. Guitar, yes. Thank you. Uh, harmonica and uh, piano. Um, he Very has talented. a uh, yes. <laughs> yes. He has. He has a cat. <laughs> It's important. <laughs> It's very important. <laughs> yes, very important. Uh, And, uh, the last book he uh, he, he read uh, is uh, it was a book about uh, Steve Jobs. Oh, very nice. Excellent. Now, who have we not talked to? Uh, Irina, can you hear us? Yes. Ah, okay. We did not give you. Do so we have someone who can partner with Irina? Um, here. Have we missed somebody? No. Marina. Uh, Marina, our our guest today. 
Ah, okay, okay. Irina, would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Maybe we'll let you introduce yourself. One that I will introduce myself? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm 23 years old. I'm from Omsk. I study in the Omsk, uh, how to say, Omsk Law Academy. Um, what else? I don't know. I'm not married and don't have children. Um, no, I don't have the pets at home. <laughs> <laughs> Very important facts, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and, 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 your, and, and your, your hobbies, your interests, what, what do you like to do? Uh, my hobby is uh, languages, uh, especially the Japanese language. I'm dreaming to study it. <laughs> and yeah. politics. Mm. That's Very all. nice. Mm. Well, have we met everybody? I think we have. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice. Good to meet you all. Irina, Konstantin, Marina, uh, our two Olgas, and uh, Slava, welcome. Thank you. A, a little bit about our sessions. We will meet weekly. And I oh, know you're a split group. Uh, did we miss somebody? Uh, no. <clears throat> We will meet every week at this time, and for most weeks, we will give you a little bit of hope, some materials to read, some materials to listen to, some topics to write about online, so you will get very good practice in all four of the skills, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. And we try to bring materials that are very up-to-date, that are very modern, that are very current, so that you can practice with uh, materials that are very interesting to work with. And the first thing we are going to share is a television commercial uh, from the United States that played during the Super Bowl. Who, who can... Uh, Tell me a little bit about the Super Bowl. What is the Super Bowl? Maybe it is an American football. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Um, uh, Constantine, did you watch the Super Bowl this year? No, never. Was it was it on Not, uh, Russian? No, uh, was it on Russian TV? Was it possible to watch it? <clears throat> I don't know exactly, but uh, <laughs> I didn't have an interest. In, I didn't have an interest in. Do you, uh, Constantine, I have a question for you. Do you understand American football? <laughs> no, I I heard that it is a great battle, battle, battle. Oh, I, 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 I'll tell you. Great I'll, I'll tell struggle. you. Yeah, great circle. I'll tell you something. I I don't understand it myself. I, uh -huh. I me either. I don't understand it either. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's very complicated somehow, but it, uh, somehow it eludes me. But I hear that it is very popular in the United States. Oh yes, oh yes, very popular. Very popular and soccer, which the Russians know as football, uh, is less popular in the United States, but becoming no. more popular. It sounds soaking in America, I said. Soccer, yes. Yeah. So in, in, soccer. in America, we would call it soccer. Uh -huh. And it is, we would say it is gaining in popularity. Um, more people play soccer but than before, than earlier, but now many more people play football, especially in Texas. Mm, um, you have a championship uh, the world some years ago. In yes, America. very much so. Yes, and, and so now we are active in soccer, but more active, I think, in, in football. Mm. So the Super Bowl was last weekend, and it's a big event. It's a huge event on television. And one of the features of this event 
is these advertisements, these commercials. And I'm going to play one of the commercials now so that we can see it and talk about it and think about it. And so this commercial was on TV during the Super Bowl last weekend, and millions and millions of people watched it. So I will go ahead and hit play here, and we'll watch the commercial. This is an ad that is very famous in America now. Does anybody have a few tears in their eyes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At um um we, my wife sent this commercial to me and said, I guarantee you will tear up. <laughs> let's, um, let's ask one of the uh, Olgas, maybe Olga Vasina, what, what, what was your impression of the commercial? Did it make you misty-eyed? Uh, uh, do you mean about uh, this uh, uh, video? Yeah, what impact did it have on you? Mm, it's very funny. I think it's so big friendship. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It's, and a friend uh, um, friendship between who? Between the man and uh, his horse. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic that uh, after three years, the uh, horse uh, remember his, uh, ho uh, his uh, uh, mm, I, I don't know, it's a uh, man who... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, either his breeder or maybe we call him a trainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Very so interesting. About, yeah, did, did, did you have a few tears in your eyes? Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic, I think, because I know that the horse is very uh, interesting uh, pet because uh, they um, like people very much and uh, they help uh, people uh, to be um, kind, maybe. Yeah, and um, now this is a very special kind of horse. Well, here, here's a question. Let's let's ask the other Olga. Um, did we lose one of our Olgas? Oh, I could. Um, Slava, are you there? Uh, I uh, tell about uh, advertisements. Well, let let me ask you a question. What was the product the advertisement was selling? Uh, product uh, is uh, mm, beer. Uh, it, it's a beer Budweiser. Yeah, Budweiser <laughs> beer. Budweiser but, beer. But it wasn't very clear, right? There yeah. was no salesman saying, buy Budweiser beer. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, the why horse, man. <laughs> and car and uh, and uh, Budweiser. Yeah, so you saw Budweiser on the truck. Yeah. And when he was in his kitchen, there was a bottle of beer on his table, right? 
Yeah. But it wasn't. It, you had to. You had to really pay attention to where you saw Budweiser, and it's a very big beer company. Now, let, why? Why does Bud? What's the link, Slava? What, how do we tie these together, Budweiser and horses? Where? Where's the connection? Uh, where can uh, connection? It's really an um, interesting question. Uh, I think. Uh, I think uh, what uh, uh, horse. Uh, mm, a very great uh, mm, association uh, on people and uh, with great association uh, advertisement uh, yeah this this is a this is a tough one so what what did the horse do? The Budweiser truck came and took the horse away. And what was the horse doing in the parade? Uh, I <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll help you with a little bit of background here. So Budweiser has a very very famous team of horses that are called the Budweiser Clydesdale. And then the Clydesdale is the type of horse you saw with the very fluffy hair on the mane, and you know it was a very it's a very unique kind of horse. And so, and the horses were doing what? They were pulling a a wagon. We'll look at the commercial again in a second. Budweiser doesn't deliver beer like that anymore, but historically, horses would have pulled the wagon. And so Budweiser has this very famous team of horses, and they come to our cities. I, when I was a young child, they came to the city where I lived, and they were in a parade, and we all went there to see the Budweiser Clydesdales, because they're very, very famous. So this horse, this foal, grows up to be a Budweiser Clydesdale. But as you said, he has a very strong remembrance, a very strong association um, with, with the owner. Why don't we play it through once more so everybody can look again and see all of these signs and ideas that we've been talking about. So get out your tissues if you're going to cry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I think I need a tissue every time I see that yeah. commercial. Is, is that the same? Is, is the truck at the end the same truck that he was driving along the fence line? I don't know. Was it a different? I don't know. I, we'll, we'll have to look at that. Looks like a Ford. It looked like a. <laughs> and uh, F one hundred and fifty. I I think when they played that commercial during the Super Bowl, a hundred million Americans were all getting tears in their eyes. And those commercials during the Super Bowl are very expensive. So Budweiser has one minute and one commercial, and they pay tens of millions of dollars. So they work all year to make the you know, a commercial that has the biggest impact. And we've used this word several times. Um, you know, it's it, the Russian word is that, uh, that, that it touches you, that it, it has some impact on you. You know, these, these commercials, they, they, have, they have 
more than one purpose. On, on the one hand, the, the uh, sooner or later, the purpose of a commercial is to is, is in this case to sell beer and to make money. Don't don't forget that. But the commercial also uh, has a goal of presenting the sponsor, the company, in in a favorable light of creating goodwill and and a and a favorable attitude toward a beer company. You know, there there are many ways to promote selling beer. This one is particularly effective. Yeah, very. Um, and that that's a wonderful word that, that Professor Lero just used. You know, how how did they get their message across? And Professor Marston used a really interesting word too. Very touching, right? You feel it in in your heart that. Um, that, that this is a commercial you will remember and that has an emotional impact on you um, as you go forward. So perhaps next year, Konstantin or any of you, if, if it shows on Russian TV, uh, you can watch the Super Bowl and watch for the sport. But many Americans watch just for the ads, just for the commercials. Could, um, could, I, could I ask a question as long as, before we leave this? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we uh, uh, we were correct uh, earlier in um, uh, noting that the Super Bowl was a championship of uh, of American football. Why, why, ladies, gentlemen, why why is it called a Super Bowl? Bowl. But why, where does that word come from? Bowl. It's and and the word it's it's the identical word to the Russian miska, super miska. Why, why, why do we call, <laughs> Maybe why do it we is call a, a football cup. champion? Huh? It is a cup. It's a prize for win in this competition. That's that's a very good that's a very good answer, but it's but it's not correct. It, it's it's not it's not the cup like the World Cup or the Davis Cup. Uh, it's a very good guess, but it but it's incorrect. What do you think, anyone? Super Bowl. I don't Super know another. No, that, that okay. maybe to the stadium. Super Bowl. Ah, then, uh, exactly right. Go ahead and explain that, like Constantine. Super Bowl. Huh? I don't. I repeat, please. I don't hear you. I think you're right. It's it's the stadium. The stadium Super Bowl. Super Bowl is is the stadium. Yeah. Be, because the stadium is round, huh? And and it rises, you know, it's, it looks like a bowl. The shape of the stadium is uh, like a super bowl. Like a bowl, exactly right. And and there are many bowl. They're called bowl games. These are championship games. There's the Rose Bowl and the Cotton Bowl and the. Uh, uh, Alamo Bowl, but the, the the great the greatest of the of the great games is called the Super Bowl. Constantine, very good, very good. Well, hopefully we uh, everyone's had a chance to dry the tears from their eyes. And uh, <laughs> actually, Joe, I have to correct myself. That may have been Fleetwood Mac, but it may also have been the Dixie Chicks. I I heard during our break that they did a version of this song as well. The Dixie Chicks. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> Maybe that was TV Nicks. I don't know. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going with. I'm staying with Fleetwood Mac. I'm staying with Fleetwood Mac too. I, I feel at home with Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting up a picture of a, an American president. Hopefully, you can all see that coming up on your screens. Constantine, can you can you see that picture? Yes, of course I see it. And and who is that? Who is that man? It is uh, Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, very nice, Abraham Lincoln. And um, uh, Slava, can you tell us something you know about Abraham Lincoln? What 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 do you know about him, Slava? About Abraham Lincoln, I know uh, that uh, he. Uh, abolished uh, slavery. Right, he abolished slavery. 
Yes, uh, and uh, I know what uh, Abraham Lincoln in uh, America is a hero. He is uh, this great. Right, a, a very, a very well-known president, a hero, a, a role model. Right, we we think there's some some characteristics that he has that that we might all want to have. Olga, what uh, what what can you tell me about President Lincoln? Me? Yeah. Tell me a little mm. bit about President Lincoln. I know only about uh, he uh, that he's about uh, slavery, but uh, I'm not good at uh, politics. I I, I think <laughs> because I know it's only that I know about uh, Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Um, he was yes. So we we one of the first things you learn is he abolished slavery, and he did that in the year 1863. And Olga, do you know the name of the war that was happening at that time in the United States? What war was that? Mm. It's a war between uh, North and South America. Yeah, very nice. Between the Northern and Southern states, yes. which we would know as the, the Civil War. And civil is uh, just a, a straight translation of Grazdanska uh, Vaina. Yes. And they were warring primarily about slavery. Lincoln was associated with the Northern states. And the southern states, among many things, were hoping to, to keep uh, slavery. We, we talked about a very interesting fact earlier this morning. When did the Russian czar free the serfs? In what year, Olga? Do you know uh, your Russian history? Russian czars. Russian czar freed the serfs in what year? It was very close. Uh, write it, please, in the chat. Yeah, well, I think uh, Professor Mercer... 1861? 1861, yeah. Uh, so in 1861, the Russian czar frees the serfs. Oh. And it's not until 1863 that Lincoln actually frees the slaves. So that's obviously a very important theme um, in, in that... Um, okay. What happened? Oh, it happened. Um, his screen has frozen, and he's uh, going to come back in just a minute. Okay. But, um, uh, we do. It is one of the difficulties uh, that we occasionally have uh, meeting um, in video conferencing online, as we were doing, but. Um, and it always seems to happen in mid-sentence. Um, people don't fall off quietly. They do so swiftly and with style. Um, but we can talk about Lincoln. Um, I suspect that, uh, well, first you should know that uh, a civil war, as you probably know, um, is very wrenching. It's very difficult. Um, to um, people don't like each other for a long time afterwards. Our civil war in the middle of the 19th century uh, has not been forgotten. In the 21st century, there are still people in the South who um, are angry, very angry. Very, very conservative Southerners still refer to the Civil War as the War of Northern Aggression. The War of Northern Aggression. And people in the North refer to, to the South as secessionists, secessionists. Sorry, can I ask you, 
Yes. Um, do you uh, do you really think that uh, no? Do you think that uh, the slavery was a real reason of the war? In well, other words, go ahead, John. It, uh, 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 yes, it was. Uh huh. On they the would. Uh, no, there are other reasons often given, and and one of them is. One of them is uh, states' rights, which which is a sort of theory under which the Constitution is written, and the people in the South would claim that uh, that since states had had the right to govern themselves, that if states wanted to have slavery, they could, and if this, that, and the other. But I, th I think yes, slavery was the was the fundamental reason for the war. Thank you. So there is one other event. There are many events, but there is one other event that many people associate with President Lincoln. <coughs> and this is this is a drawing, I believe, from that event, um, where he's giving a speech. Can any of you tell me what famous speech? Uh, a Lincoln is associated with. What is this famous speech that Lincoln gave? Slava, we haven't heard from you in a few minutes. Can you tell me about a famous Lincoln uh, speech? Uh, famous speech Lincoln? Uh, uh, maybe... Uh, uh, yes. Uh, as a dedication, uh, as, as, as dedication, consecration, consecration, consecration. Yes. And he consecrates. He's, he's most famous for consecrating a cemetery at a very important battlefield. Um, and I'll help a little bit with the name here. Um, and then I think Professor Marston's already put it in the chat at a at a location called Gettysburg, and that's in the state of Pennsylvania. And we know that speech as the Gettysburg Address. Slava, have you ever heard of the Gettysburg Address? Uh, sorry, I don't uh, understand you. <laughs> the, um, do, have you ever read about or heard about this very famous speech, the Gettysburg Address? Uh, no, I uh, don't really think about uh, this famous speech uh, <laughs> ever from Lincoln. Okay, we're going to learn a little bit about that speech because many people think it is probably one of the most famous speeches uh, in all of American history. But you made a very good historical point, Slava. You said he was there to consecrate or to dedicate a cemetery, and he was because in July of 1863 there had been a very famous battle uh, in Gettysburg and it was part of the Civil War as we just talked about and Lincoln came in November of 1863 to dedicate that battlefield. So if you look at it today, there should be a photo coming up on your screen called address site. Can everybody see that? Yeah. So President Lincoln comes in November of 1863 to consecrate or to dedicate the cemetery 
because the battle was so terrible. Many thousands and thousands of people died in the Battle of Gettysburg. So here you can see the cemetery. It's a, it's a federal, it's a, a national cemetery after the Battle of Gettysburg. And in fact, this hill, this area, this place is where we think Lincoln gave the address. He was probably at the top of the hill where that monument is. And there were many, many crowds around him. But this was before recording, so there's no re recording of this speech. There's no audio. We have only one photograph from the speech. But it's a very, very famous event and speech. It's also a very short speech, only mm -hmm. several hundred words. And so we're going to read about Gettysburg and read about the Gettysburg Address and learn about it because many people think it's a very important moment in American history. Can did, my go ahead. No, Olga, did you were you going to say something? Yeah, Olga, uh, please. Uh, I just uh, I've read that uh, uh, the speech uh, was two minutes only. Yeah, we think it was only two or three minutes long. Uh, it it really and, and in fact it followed a much longer speech. There was there was a first speaker who spoke for three hours, and then Lincoln got up. The president stood up and said this speech very quickly, and sat back down. And only as people began to think about the words did they realize how important his very, very short speech had been. Why don't um, legend sure. says that he that he that he rode the train from Washington to Gettysburg, and while he was on the train, he wrote the speech on the back of an envelope. Wrote the speech. Wrote the speech on the back of an envelope. I don't know if that's true, but it's a nice legend. It's a good story. It's a good story. This is a good time, you know, as we talk about how you learn about Americans and American today with our culture and background. Occasionally, we will ask you questions about Russian culture. So could some of the Russians tell me a very famous battle or battles in Russian history? Some very famous, you know, the, the Russian word is bitva, right? Battles or battlefield. Um, what would be a famous battle in Russian history? So Gettysburg is famous in the American context. I have too many uh, battles. Too many. Constantine, pick one. Tell me about one. Uh, it didn't have to do with how Kulikovskaya, um, yeah. Tell me what happened at Kulikovskaya. Radinskaya. Okay. And of course, Stalingrad. Grad, yeah. Tell me about Kulikovskaya. Tell, tell uh, Professor Lero, who is with us, does not speak Russian, so we will have to tell her about you know, the famous battle. I'm Professor Marston. Professor I'm sorry, Lero. Professor Marston. I'm, I'm <laughs> so excited I'm confused. Uh, yeah, yeah, Professor Marston. yeah, yeah, Professor Lero is, is, is uh, he's been to Kulikova, I think, hasn't he? <laughs> I think he has, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Professor Marston, yeah, Professor Marston is the one we will explain to. Uh, Kulikova, tell us about Kulikova. Uh, Constantine, what happened? Mm, it, right was in, uh, uh -huh. um, it was in uh, uh, right. 13, uh, 80. Yes, in 13, 80. Uh, it was uh, the battle between uh, Russians and uh, mm -hmm. Tartar. I don't know. So the uh, the Tatars, we would say. This, this is a very hard. This is a very hard word, um, uh, Constant, uh, for Constantine, for us too. Sometimes we call them the Mongols, huh? Yes, <laughs> we call. Tatars and Mongols in in one word. Tatar Mongols. Yeah. 
then uh, the head of Russian army was uh, Prince Dmitry Donskoy and uh, chief of uh, Tartar was uh, uh, somewhat Mamai. Mamai, yeah. Uh, Russian. And the prince, the prince Dmitry Donskoy was he was a, a Moscow prince, yes. Yes, he was a great, uh, great prince of Moscow. Uh, the Moscow was the main, uh, the main region in Russia at that time. So, would you say that that Prince Dmitri was a role model? Mm, role model for me. No, or for anyone, uh, I I, I don't know about him. We don't know about him too many, uh, but he he was a great man for us in history. Mm -hmm. We love him, <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't know what Russian wins. Are you hearing me? Слышь, что мне нет? Я слышу. Я тоже слышу. Let's let's talk. We we need to speak in English, ladies and gentlemen. That's very important. And and so. We check our connect. Yeah. We need to speak even even that kind of talk. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Good. Okay. good. Yes, Would someone else talk about Barodino? Oh, I want to. The person who has um, said she's interested in history uh, is Irina. Mm. Is that right? I said that I'm interested in politics, not in history. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, they're connected. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today's politics is tomorrow's history. Yeah. Who, who's going to tell us about Baradino? Uh, I know just the year, actually. Okay. And what year was it? 1820. Uh, 1820, yeah. Okay. And and who was trying to uh, invade Moscow during that period? <laughs> it was the uh, French against uh, Russians. Right? Yeah, and in particular, <laughs> who was the Fran who was the French leader? Uh, Napoleon. Napoleon, yes. Yeah. And uh, how far did he get? He got to Moscow, didn't he, Irina? But he couldn't hold Moscow. Uh, I think yes. Actually, I'm not so. I don't know this period <laughs> of the history, so I can't say something. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, but you're doing well. What 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 is that war called? We call it the in in the in in America we refer to those as the Napoleonic Wars. But what do the Russians call that? What do the what do the I don't know. Or <laughs> Constantine, what what do you call that that war in Russian? Sorry, when I... Napoleon Napoleon invades. Why Napoleon? Well, uh, how how Russian call this war? Uh, what do they call that war? The Napoleonic War. Well, the Patriotic War. The patriotic. patriotic War. The Patriotic yeah, War. Yeah, the Patriotic War. The patriotic and what what author, what famous Russian author uh, writes about the Battle of Baradino, that whole invasion? Oh, of course. Lev Tolstoy. What? Tolstoy, of course, yes. Um, and uh, Lermontov. Lermontov. Lermontov, exactly. 
it was very interesting to me that Constantine picked a battle in 1380, right? Almost a thousand years ago, or 800 years ago. Um, the Russians have this wonderful sense of history. And did we have at least one other battle we wanted to talk about? We talked about Kulikovo, we talked about Baradino. Constantine, you had one other battle you mentioned from World War II. What was that? Uh, tell, me, tell us about that one in English. It's very difficult. It was a great battle between during uh, World War II. It was the uh, first. No, actually, it was the second battle where Russian win. Um, German Germans soldiers. It was too many uh, died in in this battle. Uh, how many people died in the Battle of Stalingrad? Many thousands, right? Mm, no, not thousands. Almost million. From no, it was, it was thousands. Around. <laughs> So, and oh, I think we just lost the graphic. That's all right. Um, and so that was World War II. And here's my last question, Constantine. What? How do Russians refer? In America, we call it World War II. How do Russians call this war? Uh, the Great Patriotic War. The Great Patriotic War, right? Patriotic. Sounds. Uh, yeah, uh, great patriotic or, or great fatherland war. I have a question because I wrote in the notes that the Napoleonic Wars were called the Patriotic War for Russians. Right. Yeah. And so, and this one is called the Great Patriotic War. Right. Yeah, Vyalikaya. <laughs> Some years ago, the Napoleon, the war of. of uh, 1820 was called uh, First Patriotic War. Then World War Two, uh, no, 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 World War One was the uh, Second Patriotic War. And after Revolution, we call the war with the uh, French as Patriotic War, and uh, World War Two a Great Patriotic War. So this word great, I am beginning to think, um, is um, is a powerful word. And when we started, we were talking about the great state of Texas. Mm. Ah, yes. And, uh, <laughs> and usually we find it a word that is hyperbolic. Kind of a little mighty pompous. Thing. Pompous. Yes. Um, and when you say the great state of Texas, try <laughs> <laughs> something. Right. Uh, you see, I'm interested in politics too, and I grew up um, hearing uh, lots of patriotic speeches, and and so that resonates for me. That reverberates. I hear it in my bones. The great state of, in my case, Oregon, but oh well. I want to ask uh, the students a question. Uh, in the last two or three weeks, uh, we celebrated, history celebrated the uh, 70th, 70th anniversary of, of the, the Battle of Stalingrad. The Battle of Stalingrad. And... Uh, and 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 I read in the news that just that in honor of the of the victory that the the city government of now Volgograd just for that one day the day of the anniversary officially changed the name back to Stalingrad. Is is that true? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so is is that was that a good idea? Do you think that's a good idea or what? Is that a good idea? Mm, maybe yes, because maybe yes. Uh, because the people uh, 
come back to uh, that uh, uh, great uh, time in our history and uh, maybe uh, it's a good way to uh, remember uh, the the name of this uh, this city uh, 60 years ago I think uh, not, not a lot uh, uh, Purples uh, in in school at school uh, know that uh, uh, the name of uh, uh, Volgograd uh, before was Stalingrad, and uh, maybe it's uh, um, maybe a little confused uh, on uh, in our history. It's uh, Stalingrad and uh, Volgograd. I think That's it's a uh, good way. That's interesting. That's very good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else want to comment? I have another question about Volgograd. Oh. What was it called before it was called Stalingrad? <laughs> Tsaritsyn. Uh. It's called Tsaritsyn. Tsaritsyn. And could someone write that for me in the chat? Uh, I will. In, in English. Tsaritsyn. <laughs> T-S-A-R-I-N-G. Tsaritsyn. Oh, no. Tsaritsyn. It's in the chat. Oh, I, 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 I did it privately. Just a second. Here we go. Ah, there it is. Uh, so is that some kind of a diminutive of star? Uh, it's, of a star? Is it it's a derivative of it, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The czar's territory. Czar's yeah. territory. Ah. Yes, we used to say about LBJ that uh, he would say, they're all my helicopters. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And well, so it, it was all the czar's territory, I guess. For next week, <coughs> remember that we're going to meet at this time every week. <coughs> we are going to give you a text, a, a chapter, a short chapter from a book. And the text is about the speech at Gettysburg. And we're going to ask you to read this book chapter. And we're going to send you two parts. We're going to send you the pages, the, the text on the screen, the, or the text that you can read. And we're also going to send you a recording of the author reading that chapter so that you can practice, practice reading, practice listening. And we would like you to do that several times, not just once, but maybe three times or five times. We want you to read through it and listen to it at the same time so that you can begin to work with and think about what the person is telling us in this book chapter. The author of this chapter is a writer named Sarah Vowell, V-O-W-E-L-L. -L. And she is an American author, um, but she is also a humorist. So she has, um, I think the best way to talk about it is she has an attitude. She's, um, sometimes she's irreverent, sometimes um, a Jan or Joe had a good phrase for her. Sometimes you say she has a smart mouth or that she's snarky. <clears throat> but she's interested in history and she visits battlefields and she's very interested in what the battlefield is like now in modernity. How do Americans think about the battle? Or in many cases, how do they not think about the battle? Are they more interested in the battlefield or in getting a good lunch? <laughs> um, so she brings a very modern view to 
very important battlefields. This is an interesting genre. You may have to read through it several times to get a sense for um, how she approaches this. And every week we are going to send you some more materials to practice with, some materials to read, some materials to listen to, and we are going to ask you every week to write in the blog. Jan, can you perhaps, or Professor Marston, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Uh, some of you have already posted um, your assignment about writing about a role model. There's really some wonderful things uh, written there. Um, and you will continue to get practice writing on various topics um, in, in the club blog for American Americans today. And I and, and my colleagues will write comments as well about what you write. This is um, the writing component of this course, some done in class through the chat, and some done outside of class in the blog is an important way for you to get practice. Anytime you can make an association between the spoken language and the written language, you will learn faster. And they've done quite a bit of research on this. So um, if you have not yet uh, found the place to uh, write about a role model, um, you need to do that right away. I will be writing uh, my comments, and I'm also going to write about a role model for me. Um, and my role model, I'll just uh, give you a preview of coming attractions, is Hillary Rodham Clinton. And um, so I will, uh, I'll write uh, about my role model there. So please, um, look at that space and write something. And please also feel uh, free to make comments about what other people have written. Just make sure that you're not writing something snarky. Um, and I will look forward to reading you uh, as well as hearing from you. This is your time. You need to be active. Uh, because we're all uh, professors from the era where the professors did more talking, and I know that you're really used to that sort of style. But if you want to learn to talk, you have to interact. You have to engage. You have to be a little pushy. So you need to assert yourself and speak up. That's fine. We like hearing from you. And... Um, so you need to write. Back to you, Pete. So let's think about role models a little bit. Who, who might role models be in Russia today? Who might young Russian boys and girls look up to and say, that person in Russia is my, my role model? Uh, who wants to start us off? Slava, you want to start us off? Who would be a, a popular role model in Russia today? You mean uh, uh, alive people or? Yeah, uh, probably alive people. They 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 don't have to be alive, but. Um, Constantine, who might you say is a, a, a popular role model in Russia today? Mm, you see, I don't know. There is no role model today. It was uh, some years ago, but today I have a doubt that there is a person who is a role model for today. So who, who might have been in the past? Who, who, who can you think of from the past? Um, some years ago, the heroes of Great Patriotic War or heroes of Civil War, I mean uh, Russian Civil War, right. uh, uh, role models.
model. <clears throat> then, uh, some many years later, Arnold Schwarzenegger became the role model for many people. And now, I don't know, I think that there is no role model person. There is when we first started talking about uh, role models, I would have uh, had the same position that you do, Constantine. I couldn't think of anybody. And because we live in sort of a cynical time, and uh, we used to know less about our heroes than we do now. Uh, and I think it's difficult. But once I thought about it for a while, I was able to come up with some role models. Some people would say sports stars are a kind of role model. But, um, but I agree, the heroes that we used to have are um, certainly in a class by themselves. They seem more heroic um, than now. But I think there are some. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I couldn't help myself. Let's ask uh, um, Olga Vasina. Do you can you think of any role models in Russia today? Um, now I, I can um, I can say only about uh, Gaidai. Maybe you know it is directed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, just. Uh, um, a few years ago, I saw a uh, TV sh um, it's a video in the internet about uh, uh, his films, uh, and uh, he uh, he uh, he was uh, at a um, uh, Great War, uh, Second World War, and uh, after that he uh, he he wanted to be more. Uh, humor, humoristic, maybe, because uh, it was uh, a lot of was just a lot of problem after uh, in uh, Russia after war, and uh, he he wants to show uh, uh, humoristic side of uh, our life and. Uh, um, he, um, uh, it's several. Uh, he had he had uh, several um, interesting film, very humoristic, and I think it's a good person in Russia as a role model. Very nice. Very nice. How about our other Olga? Uh, Suchinskaya, who might you talk about as being a role model in Russia today? Mm. I think uh, for me personally, not for all people in Russia, uh, the role model can be uh, a Russian actress, Chupan uh, Khalatova, uh, who established uh, a charity charity or some fund which uh, helps uh, people to uh, children with uh, difficult uh, diseases with difficult diseases uh, of uh, blood ah. on 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 I I'm not sure oh, can you can you type her name into the chat in, in in either English or Russian. Very nice. So we've talked about, you know, maybe military heroes, talked about sports figures, we've talked about athletes, um, uh, we've talked about an actress, for example, who has done some very good uh, work in society. All very good role models. Professor Lira, who would be a good role model in the United States these days? The United States.
Oh, I wonder if he hasn't fallen off. Uh, I think I, we I, lost I, fall off. I, I did fall off and I'm back. And I was and that I was, was record I, time. <laughs> that was record time. Um, my my new computer will automatically reconnect me with WebEx. What a what a um, role models in the United States. Well, um, I, I think that Hillary Clinton is a good role model in in the United really? States. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, um, let me think. Let me Maybe think. Uh, Barack Obama. Well, uh, Barack Obama is a is a role model. There are there are a, a couple Latino Mexican heritage politicians who are uh, uh, who are good role models. Uh, let me think. Sort of politics are are uh, pol politics are kind of on my mind these days, so I'm thinking of, of political figures. You know, there was a there was a a, 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 a famous uh, Austinite, a resident of, of Austin, who was a uh, who was a a, a role model uh, for many people. Would this be uh, Barbara Jordan? No, that would be well. Barbara Jordan is good, but I'm speaking of Lance Armstrong. Oh yes, Lance Armstrong, who was a who was an athlete and a, a survivor of cancer and a and a uh, uh, he was young and uh, and he, he was a great philanthropist. That is to say, he he gave he gave money to 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 charity to. He, Supported charitable purposes, but in the last several months, he's been completely discredited. It's it's turned out that his that he that as a cyclist that his his victories were frauds, and, and there are many people disillusioned about about Lance Armstrong. He's a he's a fallen hero. Ah, oh, good phrase. He's a fallen hero. All right, let's. Um, Slava, we'll let you have the last word. Any other individuals in Russia you might recognize as a role model? Uh, my role model and uh, many young people in Russia is a, a businessman. Uh, why not? Uh, for example, a very famous uh, businessman in Russia, Alek Tinkov. Um, maybe uh, other uh, businessmen uh, because it's very successful uh, successful people. Uh, it's people who make uh, different things. Ah, so business people would be good role models. That's a very important point as well. Yes. Well, good. We are at the end of our time today, so we will look forward. Remember that you will have your homework. We will send you a reading text and listening materials, and you will have writing homework um, as well on Webelon. And we look forward. Uh, we had a very good session today, a very rich session today. And so we look forward to seeing you all next week at the same time. Tina, thank you for coming to visit, and if you have any questions, we might stay for a moment. Um, Very much so. So, <laughs> Well, thank you all for coming, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Don't forget to save the files when you leave the meeting. Then you save your copy files. Of the chat. Well, thank you very much. It was very nice to meet you this evening. Wonderful to meet you. Good, good night or good day. I don't, I don't know. Good no? evening. Yes. Good morning for us. Good luck. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 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 Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
To exit the meeting, if you go to